Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Semi Soccer Experts Podcast, also known as the C Podcast. Uh, we are still in quarantine, and I don't know what episode we are. Adrian, twenty six. We're on twenty six. Oh, yes. uh, what's special about twenty six? I'm not sure. I don't even know. Twenty six. Uh, no, I'm not twenty six years old anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm still twenty six. Lucky bastard. I'm still twenty six. Um, uh, I think. Any particular team that has 26 titles or close to it, maybe? United has 20. United has 20? Okay, United has 20. Uh, all right, but Premier well. Titles, well, not Premier, but overall English um, championships. English championships. All right. Well, as you know, we're still in quarantine. We're still dealing with the outbreak of the coronavirus and how to adjust life to it. Um, as you know, all the leagues are still suspended. Um, some leagues have made some announcements what to do. So, uh, Adrian, you want to start us off? What's the biggest probably announcement that we have so far? Yeah, man. Um, so we just we, we just been hearing news over this past weekend that the Dutch league has actually canceled for the whole season. So, if I recall correctly, I know AX was on top. I just can't remember the second team that was tied with them. But they were literally tied on the same points, just Ajax had um, goal difference. Correct. So if that, so, if they let the season play out, or they just say, hey, we're going to give it to the team that won the most, with the most points, it would have been Ajax. But they're not going to win it um, because of that. Correct. All right. So, uh, right, Ajax was in number one, but because the season is canceled, no title is being awarded. So there will be forever an asterisk on the 2019-2020 season. Um, that, that's, you know, it's very interesting that the Dutch took this approach to just cancel the league flat out instead of keep, keep it going on. Now, we, are, we spoke about this. Uh, Italy and Germany are going to be resuming training, and Germany looks like it will be the first league to restart. Yep. Uh, so what do you think about that? What, uh, why Germany and why not Dutch? Why not Holland? Keep going. <laughs> I think let, let, it's just depending on the country that, you know, how they feel amongst themselves. Because to make a big decision like this, to either cancel or even resume play, it's just been – It's I'm pretty sure all the top teams and spoken with government and medical officials just to make sure that they know, you know, what's the proper procedure and before you return back to, you know, hosting se- practice sessions and potentially games. So I feel that Holland – um, they probably don't feel comfortable enough to continue, so they would just forego with the season. Um, I don't know what they're going to do in regards to Champions League. That's up to them. Um, but we're going to see. But as for Germany, and we just heard, and I just told you earlier, um, Italy is actually going to start hosting sessions. So Germany is expected to return um, not just training, but also um, games starting next two weeks from now. I think it's May 9th ish. May 9th. Right. So it's interesting because Italy and Germany are two of the hardest hit countries with the coronavirus yeah. most cases. And yet even outside of soccer, Germany has been lifting restrictions or hadn't didn't have some as severe of restrictions as other countries such as Italy, Spain. And, you know, so I, I find this very, you know, interesting because in Europe, everything is mostly unified. If one country does one thing, usually another country would, would follow suit and especially since Germany and, and Holland are very close together I don't, I don't think they share a land border exactly but they are very close together my only guess is I assume that Holland is much more densely populated than Germany so I'd say that's the reason why they decide to just completely uh, cancel the season I do think though there is a monetary incentive as to why the Bundesliga is continuing and why the Dutch league is not you know, if we think about, uh, I think ESPN has just bought the rights for next season for the Bundesliga, you know. So I think the Bundesliga is more incentivized to finish out this this season and start the next season on ESPN fresh. Meanwhile, P- uh, not PSVV, the Dutch League, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Ed- Edivis? Edivins? It's like the Eredivisie Ed- 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 or something like that. I know we're butchering yeah. it, though. Dutch league is a great league. I've watched some of the games when I get the chance, 
but it is not as popular as the Bundesliga, you Definitely know. Not. And Bundesliga is played on Fox Sports. And so that's another right, contractual ob- obligation I'm pretty sure they want to make through before the season ends. Right, for sure, 100%. So um, I think there is some monetary incentives to, to push the league, um, you know, to, to, uh, to start, especially since in, in Germany it, it is the most popular thing to do is to go watch a football match. Uh, as far as Italy, I'm very surprised that they're going to resume training. I understand that by now they should be I, – I don't know if they should, but I assume they would be lifting restrictions. Um, I don't know. There has been no mention of the league restarting. Last I checked, it was just like what, what you sent me. It was just the the teams resuming practice and training and whatnot. And that's the thing. Like, Italy, I told you earlier, I don't know how to feel about it. I know that they're probably, you know, doing all the proper protocol, but I feel like Italy was one of the worst hit on countries. Oh, it, it was. It is one of the worst hit countries. Yeah, you know? and it's just kind of insane to see that, you know, players are starting to – Return back because you know a lot of even play Juventus players got sick um, from the virus, and I think also some uh, Atalanta players as well. So you know you just have to factor all that and just making sure that they're good to go if they're recovered. Oh no, for sure. I mean, again, Adrian, I to be honest, I'm surprised, but that I don't think that the Italian authorities would have let them the the league or any team practice. You know. Italy had the mo- one of the most strictest quarantines yep. in, in the whole world. And on top of that, the government, you know, the, the government suspended the mortgages, suspended rent payments, suspended utility payments. So I think that for them to say, hey, you guys can resume practice is, I think it's a good sign. I think it is, you know, it's strange because we're here in the United States where things are still up in the air, still not, you know, 100% clear. But I think in Italy that they took this seriously. They did. They said, we're going to quarantine, we're going to shut down, and that's final. You know, Italy was like 100% down. Same thing, South Korea, 100%, uh, you know, they went to lockdown. They went into quarantine. They did mass testing. They did, uh, um, you know, they tracked people who had the coronavirus. South Korea will be playing professional sports. Um, the arenas will be open for basketball season and I think soccer season in that country as well. And things are resuming to normalcy in, in South Korea. The United States and South Korea had the same uh, confirmed, the first confirmed case on the same day. South Korea had flattened the curve massively quicker than the United States. Italy did not, but Italy, again, they took the same, almost the same precautions, not as severe as South Korea, but they took a lot more precautions than they had taken here. And just backing track to when they say, hey, teams can practice, I'm surprised, but I, I have complete trust in that in that system. Because the fact, number one, the fact that they said, we're going to suspend mortgages, we're going to suspend utility payments. You know, somebody has to pay the utilities. Somebody's losing out money for the mortgages. And I, I, I honestly think really that was a proper approach. You know, bail the people out and not so much the businesses. But... For, for Italy to say, hey, a business such as football can resume, you know, it says a lot. It says a lot about, about the situation over there. Yeah, and, you know, one, uh, you know, you and me together, we love football. We want to see the sport back. It's been like, what, almost two, two months without any football at all? So I it's think, been... I think March, March 15th. Like, March. Sec- yeah, first, second week of March is when they start shutting everything down. Right. You know, and I, and I do want to see football coming back. But, you know, I'm still, still unsure. I, I get it that, you know, everybody's doing proper procedure. Just my thing is, is just when we're going to get hit with the second wave, Italy may do. I'm hoping it's, that we're beyond the curve. They're all behind, beyond the curve. Right. You know, here because he, even here, like, um, the professional sports, there's no, there's no talk of any, like, teams playing, doing any practices yet. There's, there's mentions and rumors, right. but it's yeah. nothing set in stone yet. The right. only thing that's really being played is um, UFC. They're actually going to do a pay-per-view on May 9th as well um, in Florida because other states are starting to open up, you know, for, like, you know, local businesses right. and essential stuff. Right, right. No, 100%. I mean, you know, you know, there's a lot of things up in the air. There's a lot of ifs and buts and whatnot. But, again, when 
when a country like Italy, who, who took this extremely seriously, says, all right, it's time to resume life to somewhat whatever the new normal might be, uh, I, I I would take that as I would take that as like yeah okay like they took this in. now when a country like the United States says hey we can start reopening things you know uh, when you see people and especially we're in New York City the epicenter now of the global pandemic you see you see what's going on you see, you you see yeah. it you hear it you know in New York City it's serious like you get this virus seriously. And then when you go, when you hear other states reopening quick, Florida, everyone's at the beaches, you know, I don't have faith in the system here. So yeah. when people say we're going to reopen things, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But when Italy says it, when South Korea says it, when Germany says it, you know, countries that even a country like El Salvador, they didn't have any confirmed cases at all. And they still quarantine, you yeah. know. Even Guatemala, like majority of Central American countries are. Hey, okay, so when you when you have competent governments, when you have competent people at the top, you know, and, and I'm not saying all these governments are perfect, but they did what needed to be done, and now their economies will probably pick up again. I don't know about this country. I hope the best for this country, but. Yeah, at the rate, it's just looking like, it's crazy because, you know, think about it, we're in the United States, we should have like the best information and like best um, medical advice and experts helping, you know, the, the people at the top, but at the same time, they're incompetent. And now we're allowing states on a like, states reopening and it's it's getting nuts because, you know, a lot of people are gonna start taking advantage and, you know, basically doing what they wanna do. And at the same time, we don't know if they, they've even been tested or if they've been, or they're even asymptomatic with the disease. So that's, you know, that's the one thing that worries us here because, you know, here in New York, we did get hit hard. That's why we're not, you know, we're very reluctant on op opening up right. anytime soon. So 100%, you know, it, it, again, it's like when you, when you see what's going on, when you, when you know the data, when you read everything, it, it, you're very reluctant to open up. But, um, I, I think MLS, like you said, there's no official date, but there is rumors of restarting um, practices soon. Or I think yeah, I think a certain day in May they're gonna relook and just start. It's supposed to be the the official start date of resuming normal operations. Yeah, so it's not so much the season starts May 15th, but hey, we go to practice or we could do individual sessions with a trainer and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's. That's that for the American front. Um, uh, let's shoot over to the Premier League. Uh, any word on that? That's your that's your uh, expertise. <laughs> the, I hope they cancel. <laughs> the United fan in me says, I hope they cancel. Liverpool doesn't get the trophy, and United qualifies. <laughs> right. Um, um, but we don't know. Um, as of now, there's still ongoing talks with Premier League. I'm pretty sure they're gonna restart the season, or not restart, but like continue the season. It's just when and when essentially um so, so my thing is it's like if you know i think germany has more cases than than england and it might be a question of maybe infrastructure of the hospitals or density like i want i want to say that germany is one of the has the highest populations in europe but one of the more sparsely spread out countries just because it's probably one of the biggest in europe but why is is you know, my thing is, if Germany can restart the league, why hasn't the Premier League announced something similar? You know, we already have an announcement from, from the Italian league. We already have an announcement from the German league. And we have an announcement from uh, of the Dutch league, which is canceled. Um, we still haven't heard anything from Spain, from France, and from England, which is, makes up the five big, big leagues. You know, uh, I assume Portugal will follow, probably follow in Spain's footsteps uh, and uh, whatnot. So... My thing is, what's going on there? Like, why hasn't England said it? Why hasn't the Premier League said something? I guess they don't want to shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> That's the one thing. I mean, sure. I don't. I don't think they'll shoot themselves in the foot. But I, I think it is important to inform the people. Hey, this is our steps. Because I haven't heard anything. I haven't read anything. To be fair, I haven't done my research at all this time. But you know, th there should be some rumor on Twitter. Yeah. Grapevine, there should be something on the grapevine, and I've not yet heard it. Yeah, no, yeah, nobody knows. Like, I've been looking every day just to see, get a whiff of 
anything about the EPL, La Liga, like those two leagues especially, but I haven't heard anything. It's like, it's very, very shut tight by the lip. You know, we hear some rumors, so this is going to happen. They're going to play like a lot of games extend to like August or whatever the case may be. But like I said, I don't even know. Um, it's like nobody's saying anything, or I think just nobody knows on their end because I think they just want to start when they're 100, 100 percent, like not 100, but 110 percent, I guess. Right, right. At a, at a safe point, you know, resume operations at a safe point where no one's going to get sick and no one's going to die. Um, but again, like my thing is, I, I think there's been a lack of transparency Yeah. with the Premier League. I think. The Bundesliga has been more open. You know, Germany Germany in general has been handling this situation. And it's like, I've been tempted to move over to Germany because I the Germans like, are smart. That's the one thing I would say. Right. They're a smart country and they, they know how to, like, run shit. That's... hundred percent, you know. It's a beautiful got, country, too. If you ever had the chance to visit Germany, you must do it, man. Not just for Oktoberfest, but for... <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're, we're out in that... Um, you know, and again, it's crazy. Like, like you say, we love football and we hope it resumes. But I think at least something, some little bit of information, telling the fan. Okay, I think I got something. So this is just a report. Um, you can take over the grain of salt from the Daily Mail. So absolutely, yeah. No. Uh, Premier League clubs have sent letters to players saying that they should be available to resume activities within forty-eight hours' notice. It will be their responsibility to ensure. They can return within 80, 48 hours of receiving notification. So uh, it's pretty that, vague, but so I guess in the next that's two days. There, that's, that's a problem. Yeah. Because there's so many players that probably are not located in England right now. Yeah. A lot of players. You know, I think Kristen Pulisic is still in London, you know, but apart from like any major American players, I don't know. There's a lot of players that – are not from England. They probably went home. Now think about the logistics of that. You can't catch a flight within forty-eight hours now. Yeah, you can. It, like, a lot of yeah, especially in the country you are. The like, for example, if a player's from Russia, they're shut down. Right. Russia's not letting anybody out. If there's any player in the United States right now, they still can't go to Europe. There's no flights yeah. to Europe right now. There's no yeah. There's no flights out to Europe. You know, it's very, a lot yeah. of um, countries have banned. Or I'm like, sure it's even worse. Like any players that located in Africa, it's much harder to get a flight from Africa to Europe. Probably, you know. Mm-hmm. And now, now you're talking immigration status. You're talking visa status. Uh, even if you do catch a flight, is the country going to let you in? I guarantee you that if there is an American that manages to get a flight back to to the UK, UK's not going to let them in. Like you're coming from the epicenter. You're coming from the hotbed. Yeah. You know, that's the Plus, even when even if they do arrive, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have them do like two weeks um isolation, you know, being quarantined because that's the other issue. Yeah, depending where you come from, hey, we, we gotta isolate you. You're but sick. I I don't think that many players, to be honest, have left the country. No, as I don't think so either. By the time that the UK did, UK was one of the last. They were the last ones. <laughs> It it took um, Arteta to get sick for them to suspend operations. Right, it was the UK. UK was one of the last um, countries to get to complete to do the quarantine. So it, it's really, I think, forty eight hours is is ridiculous, un, un, unreasonable. It sounds um, like a movie. <laughs> get this thing done in forty eight like, hours. We're, living, we're leaving. We are living in a movie, man. We're living in a historical moment. I'm just waiting for the dead bodies to start rising up and eating people. That's the next step. The walking Dead. The Walking Dead, absolutely, man. People, there's a lot of dead bodies that have not been buried that are in those I trucks. Know, man. It's, and that's a sad thing. It's crazy. It's crazy out there, man. So please, everyone needs to stay inside. Yes. Um, yes, because the sooner this whole thing gets through, the sooner we'll be back out, honestly. For one thing. Normalcy. All right, Adrian. Uh, what other topic I think we got to talk about? It's not much except everyone's getting quarantined. Yeah, everyone's just getting quarantined. Um, there's not there's not much that's been going on, you know. As we were talking about the Bundesliga and all the other leagues trying to start up, um, but do you see? How do you see the Champions League starting up? There was also a rumor that I heard, um, depending on depending on the Premier League, if hypothetically if it was to be suspended or not, um, 
being played for the rest of the season. It'll be ba- for um, EPL. It will be based on a supporting merit. How do you feel about that? I saw I saw that article and the language they use. They use sporting merit. I hate that. Sporting merit. I hate that because let me tell you, when people say sporting merit, you know that that phrase could be very ambiguous. You can you can interpret it a hundred different ways. You you think of sporting merit, well, you might think of a, a team like Nottingham Forest who has won the Champions League twice, right? Yep. But what UEFA was really saying is that we're going to use it based on the UEFA coefficient. Yep. Which, if for those of you who don't know what the UEFA coefficient is, it's the actual ranking of all the football clubs. No matter what country you are, they rank the football clubs based on a mathematical formula, based on points, wins, home, etc. You know? So now, when you use the term sporting merit, it's not the Forest <laughs> deserves to go more to the Champions League than Arsenal because they won it twice. Yeah. Aston Villa should go to the Champions League on, based on. A and I feel team. like if it's based on the merit, Arsenal would actually get back in the Champions League because of that. No, um, I, I mean if you say sporting merit, Nottingham Forest, who plays right now in the Championship, has two. Way for Champions Leagues. Yeah, but they wouldn't qualify, though. If you say sporting merit. I know, if you do, if you but... If sporting merit, they, would, they should go. They would have more merit than Arsenal. But that's what I'm saying. I don't like the term sporting merit. They should have said way for coefficients. Because if you read the article, that's what they mean. Way for coefficient. You know? I understand that. But when, when I think the tabloids definitely use that, the term sporting merit just to rile people up. You know, again, if you go to Spain, who on, you know, Barcelona Real Madrid go up? And then who else? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I know. I think we should also break it down as to what, um, not, I'm pretty sure not many people know what the coefficient actually means. I think we should mention, like, yeah, like the summer, a, summary of it. So, um, so essentially, coefficient, um, if you wonder why there's, like, not an even amount of teams from each country qualifying to Champions League, it's due to the coefficient. So, for example, EPL, four teams. La Liga, four teams. Portugal, I think it's only like two teams. You know, it's all broken down to each country and pretty much how many teams have won the Champions League there. So, so that, that's the, the allocation of spots. So that, that's the way for Cole Fisher for the national teams, for the national leagues. Yes. Right. So when you do the other way, there's the other parts of the way for Cole Fisher where they actually – rank all the teams from f- number one to how many uh, how many of the club teams are in Europe. They do the same thing for South America, but it's not – it's not the column ball doesn't do it. I think it's the IC, IFC. IFSC. Whatever. There's an organization that ranks all the clubs in South America. And then FIFA and, and uh, FIFA combines the South American and the UEFA, and they combine and they get the top 100 clubs. But, again – Yes, wafer coefficient is how they allocate all the uh, the clubs to to the Champions League. Now, prior to this, uh, Spain, Germany, no, yes, yeah, Spain, Germany, and uh, England had the four spots. Italy had had three. So, and as you know, it's for the top for England, Germany, and, and Italy. I'm sorry, England, Germany, and Spain, it's three, and then they have uh, the fourth has to play a knockout round. You remember that? So yeah, prior yeah. to that, Italy only had the, the first two were guaranteed, and then the third had to play the knockout round. But now Italy gets all, all, four, all three guaranteed and one knockout, so four. Yeah. Right? So the way for it used to be yes based on the way for coefficient but then way for allocated more spots to italy because it would generate more revenue because there was more italian teams in the league but like i said again it is all supposedly all going to be based on the way for coefficient who knows what when the moment actually comes what they're going to do but again i don't like the term sporting merit yeah because we go back to spain uh, let's do germany now you go to Germany. Uh, Bayern, Munich. Bayern Munich goes first. Dortmund, then, no, not Dortmund. Um, Dortmund would, was won the Champions League. I know. No, that's another. That's another. That's another Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim. Isn't Hoffenheim? Hoffenheim was with the Champions League, but now they're playing the second Bundesliga. Yeah. So now again, yeah, got bumped you, down. 
you you go you say Sporting Man. Well, Hoffenheim won the Champions League. They should go. Or um, what about Bayern Leverkusen? I think they're another. I think they won the. I know they've been to finals, but I don't know if they won. They've been to finals, and I want to say they did win one. I might be wrong. No, I don't think they won it. They lost the final. Yeah, because they, um, they played, I believe, Real Madrid like around the two thousands. Right. So what? But now, what would you say? Atletico Madrid has won, has been to Champions League final many times, but Sevilla has won more UEFA Cups. Yeah. Based on sporting merit, merit, who goes, right? But that's why they said the way for coefficient, because it's a mathematical formula based on, you know, your wins and losses and so forth. So, again, I just, just to recap everything, I don't like sporting merit. I do not like that phrase. I think they did that purposely to rile up conversations, to rile up people, to get people mad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I was just looking up Bayern Leverkusen. and they actually only won the UEFA Cup in 1987. The crazy thing is that the only time they've been to the Champions League is when they played um, against Sudan Real Madrid in 2002. Uh, yep. It's crazy. Right. But hey, the cha- Champions League is rare, man. <laughs> yeah, Especially yeah, from the bigger teams. 100%. Um, but yeah, so, so hopefully like we get a good Champions League. You know, I, I like the idea of the wafer coefficient. I just don't like sporting merit, but I like the wafer coefficient, you know, I think it's it's a good way to start something new, but hope you know. And at the end of the day, I just want everything to go back to normal. But for now, I think the way for coefficient is a good stepping stone forward for the whole organization on who gets to play the Champions League next year. And who knows? It looks like the you know I think La Liga did. There was a rumor about La Liga saying they're gonna play behind closed doors till 2021, till January 2021. That would be insane. That's insane. That's crazy, man. Imagine a classical with no fans. <laughs> right. It's, it's, you know, it is what it is at the times. But That's the thing, too, because it's step by step, um, this right. whole like, return to sports and all the events that go along with it. Um, I don't anticipate any fans, so at least after the summertime. Um, I think in Europe, especially here in the States, um, I don't, there's not going to be any fan interaction or anything. So. Not till after the summertime because oh no, hundred percent not till. I after feel that. like yeah, I feel like everybody should take precaution, and also just ensuring that like we're a hundred and ten percent. You know, it happens. That's a great. That's a great topic, actually. You know, even if the government says, let's let let let's think about this. This the White House says, and we all know. I think the the American opinion of the White House is not that they don't trust it a lot. Let's just say, hey, you guys can fill the stadiums again. I think it's going to come from point. It's going to come from a point of liability right now. You know, God forbid they fill, fill Red Bull Arena and someone gets sick. Who's responsible for that? Is it is it Red Bull Arena? MLS. Is it, MLS? Is it the government because they give clearance? You know, who then then who's going to pay for that? Pointing the finger, everyone. Someone's going to be pointing the finger. Who's liable? Who, that's, that's another thing. Even if there is a green light from the government to say, hey, you could go back to the stadium again, people are still not going to go. Yeah. There's still yeah. going to be a fear out there, you know? Um, it's just and that's, one thing, that's one thing I think we should also, like, mention with our boy Marco. He wants to do an episode with us because um, he works in ticket sales. So something we should talk to him about um in regards to this because if you're if you're working in ticket sales how are you going to persuade the fans to come back once this thing 100 percent, you know what what is now yeah the departments of sales for for uh major league soccer for any sport in general what is you're going to feel the pressure you know i think there's a lot of ticket reps a lot of sales people who handle accounts who are under contracts by their clubs now do these clubs honor these contracts? Do these clubs still pay out for what they what they were owed? And how does a team generate revenue now? You know, how do you persuade the average fan to to uh, to come to the stadium and to or to buy a ticket's worth? Now, interesting thing: the Bundesliga says, "Hey, if you don't want to come to the stadium, that's fine. But you know what we're going to do? You can buy a cutout of yourself, a giant cardboard cutout of yourself, and we'll put it to, in a seat in the stadium." Are you serious? So that, that was something my friend was telling me about. I haven't actually done my research on it, but I think that's a great approach. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Just seeing a dummy of you it, just it, sitting it, at the stadium. Listen, it, it pleases the fan and it generates revenue for the team. Why not? It makes sense. You know, you, you want to, as a fan, now this is getting a little like non-technical, but as a fan, you want to feel the atmosphere. You want to be there with your team. If you can't be there physically, you know, let me get a cardboard of myself. You know, a lot of people do that. A lot of people, especially those who pass away, they'll make a statue or they'll have a picture and they put it permanently in the seat. You know, I think there's this one Valencia fan. This story was that he went blind, but still went to the games and, the, and Valencia permanently, you know, put a statue of him in that seat. That's a nice touch. I think I heard about that too, um, about that one fan who goes to like every Valencia game, even though he was blind, but just gets to hear the roar of the stadium and right. the atmosphere. It's what made him keep going there. It's All crazy right. is how people do this just for the love of the game, man. Absolutely, 100%. Um, what was I going to say? But, yeah, that's that's where we are. I mean, the whole business is, is up in the air. You know, there's a lot of logistics, like, being figured out. Now, also, you think about concessions. Do you staff a full, a full uh, concession stand? The it's whole, probably going to be like 50% or something. Percent or less. I think I'd say it's less. The people, the parking. You yeah. still charge $20 of parking, you know, those are abundant parking? Yeah. Or do you charge more because you need to make your, your revenue? There's a lot. There's it's a lot so many, it's so many tricky things that they're going to have to do and to like figure out once they're starting to reassess everything because you can only bring back so much staff and I think they just have to do little by little before they figure out how they're going to get things working up again um right. you know right. tv money can go so long but you know once you're not making as much as the other revenue streams you know you're starting to look at a loss and it's not working out so it also and the other thing too that a lot of um a lot of articles I've been seeing was that especially for this next transfer market how are teams going to fare out? Because they got hit, you know, they're financially hard. Right? Financially, yeah. But the value yeah, of that. They're going to want to buy the players they can. Out. Right. Players don't go down. Just because just cause you did generate revenue doesn't mean the player's skill goes down or his value no, goes down. Not. And it's, and since PSG inflated the shit out of Neymar's price tag, you know, it's going to be – this This is pretty much a new norm of how much – People, um, teams are going to be spending for players, so it's ridiculous. Right. I mean, I think the biggest, the biggest thing you said it right there is like Neymar, PSG. The price of oil is about a dollar a barrel now. How's that going to affect Man City and PSG? <laughs> it's something to think about, man. Yeah. You know, well, they still I, are those people. You know, does the sheik that owns Man City are they still going to you know? Are they still going to stay there? Are they still going to invest as much money as they were before? Or are they going to cut back? And then what happens to Man City? They can't afford Who the knows? And they're, and they're facing a, the potential Champions League bang. That's the other thing. Oh, that's part. Like affecting that's, them. So. And that's like, another in, uh, income source that they may lose if they don't go for Champions League. So City's going to get hit hard if everything comes collapsing in on them. Not like I, I have sympathy for them, but still. <laughs> And then if the, if that collapses on them, what's going to happen to NYCFC? Oh, uh, no more new stadium? Who knows? Oh, no, no, look, that stadium is now definitely put on hold. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, again, there's a lot of, lot of moving pieces going around. You know, this quarantine is just not good for anybody. Um, AJ, do you want to talk about something else? Is there something on your mind? Well, is that, well... Tax you actually. Um, what have you been doing like since we last talked? Since like we FIFA, or... uh, FIFA, no, uh, apart from FIFA, I do play pro clubs with some of my friends, uh, but mostly playing a lot of uh, Battlefield. Battlefield's always been my game. <laughs> uh, I was ranked in Battlefield 3 at one point, I was ranked 34th in the world for headshot kills. And 34th, 34th out of you know, who, how many. You know, at least a million people play Battlefield. Uh, but yeah, what about you, AJ? Have you been playing a lot of FIFA? Yeah, I've been I've been playing a lot of FIFA tournaments because since everyone's home now, uh, me and my boys have been doing tournaments. Um, I was in the semifinal of a, of a like thirty two man tournament, so it wasn't that wow, bad. Congratulations! 
Yeah, just want to win it all. That's that's been the biggest thing. A lot of organizations, Red Bull, MLS, they're doing FIFA tournaments. Yeah, and like we t- talked about in the last episode, um, the esports have actually they went on the air last week, and it's been pr- pretty good. Um, like, it was on Twitch, you. right? Yeah, it was, it was, and also on Fox Sports One. Okay, I, I got to get on that because I completely missed it. But you know, the interesting thing is, I think I think this is a great like we we talked about this before. On, a pre- on the previous episode, but they need to embrace this. Yes. Like, this has to be and, – and I guarantee you if they do, like, market it properly, put a great spin on it, that's something that people will watch, especially after an actual MLS game. Will they still will, – they're going to stay glued to the TV, especially the diehard fans, and watch the EMLS. Or maybe not so much after, but before. The warm up to the actual game, you know, you have if you have a derby, NYCFC versus Red Bulls, have the two esports players play beforehand. You know what? What's a FIFA game? It can't be more than twenty minutes. Yeah, it's pro- It's part of your your warm up, your your commentary, your whatever. Yeah, I think that I think that's where they need to lean into it towards. You know, I I think it it would it would be a great, but even then. Esports, especially EMLS, it's, it's been a ro- it's been around for a while, but it hasn't caught storm. It hasn't caught fire yet. Yeah, and I think this is the great. This is the opportunity. It's not the greatest. It is the opportunity to capitalize that and to make another product grow. No, I hear you. It is something like we mentioned last episode. It is something that we want to see grow. I was even trying to see if their how the ratings were this past week. Um, you know, because we did see it all uh, online and on different uh, platforms that they were hyping this up. But was it like, I know it was marketed through social media, but was it actually advertised on TV and different types of I, I don't think it was. I mean, I don't have TV on cable, but I don't think it was. Yeah, and, and I don't watch as much cable as I used to because I'm just pretty much on my Roku. So I'm just switching out of that and different um on streaming platforms so you know you can't really tell but i'm just like you said i'm i'm hoping that you know, um the esports does pick up because this is another like cool thing that people can watch on the television and you know just be a part of and you know relate to because everyone loves to play fifa right right and, so adrian how much time do we have because i know we are on a time crunch especially with the we zoom. are on a time crunch i think we got five more minutes five more minutes perfect because i do want to end with one last thing especially those of you who live in new york um for those of you who are in new york and are big into soccer in new york i'm sure you guys all know the new york cosmos and where they play they, they supposedly are going to be playing when all this is over in the nisa and it's supposed to be official the official league under the USL, under the USL Championship, under USL 1, and under USL 2. So, I don't know if, in theory, that will be the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th league or 3rd league. If you count all of USL as 1 or you count all USL as 3 different leagues. I think people refer to the 3rd league. I think it's, been, it's being referred as a 3rd league. I don't know the stance of the Federation because it ultimately it is the Federation who gives that sanctioning to those leagues. As you know, that the NASL used to be the second league, and that was because of the sanctioning that the Federation gave them. So yeah. NISA is an independent league that is supposed to be have less ties with the Federation than MLS or USL High. Why am I mentioning NISA and New York? We have a new professional soccer cl- club yes, we do. forming in New York. And I didn't even know about this till yesterday. Yeah, this was um I've heard rumors, I wasn't sure, but the official announcement was a couple days ago. New Amsterdam FC, which will be playing, I think, in the Bronx. You know, interesting. I have no information on this team. What's yeah, on? and that's something I've told you too. I think we should talk about this next episode and see how this can potentially impact because we did mention like about the cosmos and how their their situation has been going on. But now they have a derby rival, New Amsterdam <laughs> Soccer right. Club. Listen, New York Cosmos all, always have fans. Those are that's the one fan base that refuses to die. Too. You know yeah, they yeah, have very yeah. diehard fans. Uh, Rebels and NYCFC are going to have fans. 
Queensboro FC already has fans. That's four. New Amsterdam FC, five. We have five teams. That's five professional teams that aspire to in be in the New York Tri-State. New York yeah. Tri-State area. So it's an interesting thing. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this next episode. I just want to mention to this because this is very exciting. This is a brand new team within yeah. within the first the, uh, the beginning of 2020. We have two professional soccer teams. First was Queensboro FC. Now we got New Amsterdam FC. Now who knows what's coming next? But yeah, or when will they start? <laughs> you know, oh, man, the big question crazy. is, where are they going to play? Rumor has it it's in the Bronx. I don't know, but whatever. Um, Adrian, I think that is for time, correct? Yes. I want to thank you guys for listening to our podcast. It's going to be on YouTube, and we're going to see if we can extract this to an audio version. I want to thank you guys for listening, and let us know what hey, you think. Guys, thank you very much. Have a good one.